Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, Spirited Conversations with Interesting People. I'm your host, Christopher Hart. Man, Brandon is starving. Uh, this week's episode is two of three interviews at Tales of the Cocktail in New Orleans. I got the extreme pleasure of sitting down with the head of the Black Bourbon Society and hosts of Bonded in Bourbon, uh, Samara and Armand. Samara had started the Black Bourbon Society in a few years ago, and it is now the largest community that I know of, of black bourbon drinkers in the U.S. I mean, there's almost 8,000 members in the group. They started the group a few years ago to kind of provide a black space, not a black only space, a very inclusive space to kind of uh, educate and share and kind of get rid of this perception that, you know, black people can only drink. Because for a while, and this is something that we discuss on the show, that uh, certain marketing firms within certain big spirits companies definitely gear their focus towards one race or the other. And oftentimes it kind of paints them in a corner that uh, is not great long-term for anybody. Uh, and she has been fighting, actively fighting that for several years now. And with the Black Bourbon Society, she's doing just that. Uh, black people drink bourbon. And that, that was her message. Black people drink bourbon. Um, and she has done a fantastic job and one of the most level-headed people, uh, I, I just to watch, watch, watching the way she ex- interacts online. If you, and for those who don't know, the Black Bourbon Society is a Facebook group. So please join it. It's inclusive, uh, obviously with a focus and, uh, their message is, is, couldn't be more loving in my in my opinion and she couldn't be more level-headed and I think if anyone is going to be heading up that kind of a monster endeavor to kind of take that mission statement on uh, it's it's Samara she is uh, she's fantastic so uh, they're on the show this week uh, Todd again joins me for another episode and uh, yeah this week's show as always, is sponsored by Trulato Distel Artists and Spirits. Brands like Bunahab and Deanston, Lechake, Tobermory, Baines, Black Bottle, and Scottish Leader. Um, this week's episode is also brought to you by Bell Mead. Bell Mead's high ride bourbon portfolio offers a variety of taste tempting expressions, including their award winning sherry, Madeira, cognac, cask finishes, as well as their classic small batch bourbon and new cast strength reserve. Uh, Balcones. In 2008, focusing on ingredients and process, they breathed new life into Texas whiskey, earning them worldwide recognition for their products. You can pick up their whiskeys at your local liquor store, or if you're a retailer, reach out to your Southern Glazers Wine and Spirits rep. Uh, Balcones is big supporters of ours, and we're huge supporters of them, and we have some really exciting things coming down the pipeline for them. Last but not least, Sagamore Rye. Some of America's most famous distillers got their start in the free state, and now Sagamore Spirit is picking up the torch. Today's production is brought to you by this award-winning Baltimore-based distillery, home of the world's best rye whiskey. See, I did it. It's flawless. Without further ado, Todd Grube, Samara, and Armand of the Black Bourbon Society. Cheers. All right, so I figured we can get started uh, with Four Roses. Okay. Yeah, it's a little lower in proof and work our way up. Uh, this is a private barrel pick that was done at Ligger Hut. Uh, I don't know if you've met him yet. He's definitely well known in the cocktail scene. He's been a big part of most imagined a bartender. Uh, Pasha Morchetti, he owns a bar called Rosewater in Houston. Okay. Um, I do, we, that might be a good segue to find out, you know, you mentioned you, you guys are coming to Houston. Are we, do you, can you talk about it or how much can you share? Not yet? We can, we can just skip right over that. No, I'll go ahead and talk about it. Okay, so I'll tell you as much as I know. Okay. So, you know, a year ago, okay. Armand and I did a barrel pick with Maker Smart. Yep. Um, Won a lot of awards. Yeah. yeah. We received double gold at the San Francisco World Spirits <clears throat> Competition. So, um, and that, um, to our knowledge and to Maker's Mark's history knowledge, that that's the only barrel pick that has received such a high recognition at an awards competition. Okay. So, they're going all in um, and working with us to, and, and they want to, they see this as an opportunity um, to build some bridges into um, the multicultural demographic and really expand um, the whole entire program around bar- private barrel selects. Sure. Um, so, um, we are laying, we laid down a couple more barrels using okay. the same stave selection. Um, one will go to New York, one will go to Chicago, one is coming to Houston. Okay. Oh, wow. One is going to New Orleans, and we're working on one getting to uh, Georgia as well. So you guys are doing a tour. 
So we'll be working with Maker Smart on doing activations and like a full city tour. It's killing it. To, it's um, awesome. It's killing it. To, yeah. To bring these bottles into market. So for those who aren't familiar, and I'm sure <clears throat> a few people are, why would you guys be doing activations? Do you guys do something in the multi multicultural community? <laughs> what are you known for? Well, hello everyone. <laughs> My name is Samara Rivers and I'm the CEO founder of Black Bourbon Society. And our Black Bourbon Society is an organization that I started three years ago when I saw there was a need for um, direct consumer marketing and, engagement, and engagement with an upscale African American demographic. Um, essentially what that means is when I came into the scene, when I was introduced to the spirits industry, I didn't see um, a lot of representation. I didn't see a lot of marketing. I didn't see a lot of um, spirits uh, brand ambassadors and, and sales reps who look like me. Sure. And so I decided to, um, I was actually challenged by the industry. We can keep drinking and I'll tell you more about that story. But yeah, let's um, talk some shit in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll spill the tea later. But um, but essentially, um, I was challenged to create you know the change that I wish to see. I kind of brought it up to the brands like, hey, how come you guys aren't doing amazing events and activations like here at Tales of Cocktail? How come you're not doing that for me and my friends? And they were like, well, we didn't know you drank bourbon. So I created a group that showed that we did. So three years later, we have about 8,000 members from across the country. Is it already up there? I remember seeing wow. it hit 6,900, then I remember like a day later, it was at 7,000, and then just boom, boom, boom. It, it skyrocketed this year, for sure, <clears throat> um, and we keep growing. And we've actually, like we'll talk about the bourbon societies, but we're actually, we are holding back at least a good 200, just in pending. <clears throat> memberships like, and how do people hear yeah. about it has it been word of mouth it's been word of mouth we've been lucky to receive a lot of press especially around the barrel um release mm -hmm. and the award that we received around it um i do a lot of speaking engagements on the topic okay. of diversity and inclusion within the industry so um as people find out more about our mission and the work that armand and i do behind the scenes consulting with the brands um people start to tag along and and tell their friends they tell their entire networks and they you know it's grown like wildflower yeah wow. so um we do events all over the country and we work with the brands to really produce genuine engagement um with our audience so well the, and the audience has been um as you said explosive i mean uh and not only that it's also not um so uh, there was a i'm trying to figure out the right order to tell this but uh, you, you're an all-inclusive society. It's not yeah. a black-only space necessarily. Yeah. Would that be the right way to say that? I know people, person of color is like the, the you know. <laughs> we say consumers of color. Sure. Um, but for us, it's really about believing in the mission of diversity and inclusion within the spirits industry. And so you don't have to be black to believe in diversity. Sure. You know, I think or to takes, support it. Or, or to support it, exactly. Um, you know, I was here yesterday speaking about um, the need for why inclusion matters within hospitality and um, it's it's something that we as Americans we as a society all have to work together to um, to to really promote and to really insist that inclusion and diversity be something that we have within the workplace within the hospitality industry within our everyday lives um, and that that requires you know that requires me being an advocate and standing up and saying hey I see something wrong here or you know I want to I want to organize something and I want to make a difference in this industry but that also requires you to you know be a helper like okay well wh who can I introduce you to sure. or what can I share your mission with my platform to help you get that message out? Can I do an interview with right. you? Right, can we do an yeah. interview? You know, it takes advocates, it takes people and, you know, within the industry themselves to say, yeah, let's give them a chance and do a barrel pick with them. And sure. let's then take that on and let's use this as an opportunity to really increase, increase our marketing efforts within, you know, our own, you know, within the multicultural demographic. So it takes... A village. It takes all of us to sure. help that. So, and that's what that's really what our organization looks like. You know, you're a member of our, our 100, group. Hundred percent. Yeah. I was a member very shortly after its creation. Uh, I want to say the fall of 2017. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's been this explosion. So, uh, in t I'm sorry, I'm all over the place here. In Texas, I've been very supportive of Uncle Nearest 
uh, at my event, and uh-huh. I work with uh, Brownstone, who handles uh, Fawn stuff here. Uh huh. And uh, and then I, I this whole thing came up uh, where I. Of course, just being in what what I do here in Houston, I talk to a lot of people, and I work with a girl who's African American, and she, you know, is starting to get into things. You know, there's always that. It, it's funny people will say that they're into whiskey or they're into something, and then you find out that they're not. They're not really into it when you say you're into it. They're more into it like I, our into it level is always way more. Right. Than the sure, person sure. Yeah. Well, she, she was mixing stuff for a Jack and Coke sort of thing. She's or, curious. Yes, yeah, so, you know, and Basil <laughs> yes. Hayden's. You know, the very introductory. 80 proof stuff and bourbon and, and curious and yes. bourbon curious bourbon. that's what we call them bourbon <laughs> curious bourbon connoisseur so we're on the other side of that spectrum and you get some stereotypical questions that come up you know the the most iconic brands I would say arguably are makers and Jack Daniels mm-hmm. you know going back not just the footprint and size but literally even if you're not a whiskey drinker you've heard of those two right yeah and she had asked me a question uh, about the whole Uncle Nearest thing because that story has also caught on like wildfire right the story of Uncle Nearest and how uh, the the person who taught Jack Daniels how to distill whiskey was a former slave mm-hmm. and uh, she's she asked me about this whole thing she's like well where does does you find out that about sourced whiskey trying to explain to her where do they get their stuff i'm like well it's from tennessee uh but it's not from jack it's you know it's from elsewhere they're they're but they're they're very new it takes time to mature whiskey right and during that discussion she just basically brought up uh uh her thoughts on it and as soon as i explained the whole backstory of uncle nearest she was kind of irritated with jack and i was like well no they're and that's where that question came from. Right. So I reached out to you, and I was like, I want to ask a question to the group, but I don't, I, I don't feel like it's my place necessarily. Yeah. And I, I will give you full credit. You and I have have never interacted up to that point, but the amount of level headedness and this is such an overwhelming endeavor that you're taking under managing a group that size that fast Mm -hmm. and the impact it's having uh i'm I'm complimenting the hell out of you for a minute and (laughs) you you deserve it uh it 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 takes one you got to be level-headed or the whole thing is going to implode right and uh you were open to the discussion you're like oh yeah absolutely let's my question was simply this for um, i realize i'm all over the place is uh I wanted to know if, if there were feelings one way or the other towards Jack Daniels as a brand now uh, versus uh, there's all the support for Uncle Nearest, the brand, and for the ownership and the history it's honoring. And I, I was like asking you if there was any feelings one way or the other, right. negative or otherwise. Like I, I think some people perceived it as me implying that there should be a negative and that definitely right. was not the case. I'm a huge Brown Foreman fan. But not only did you have a great response, you were like, you should ask the group. Fawn had an incredible response. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, I feel like the the post was a good thing. Yeah, ultimately, we had a few. We had one or two of, in there. A couple of hiccups there. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's there's, there's, especially online, especially in written form, There's it's very easy to assume the worst in some people uh, mm-hmm. or to jump to conclusions. I, I don't know, are you, do you run the group as well? Or are you... Because I don't think I've, you're, I hear your voice uh, so prominently in, in my radio station quite often, but I don't know <laughs> that I've seen you comment or anything on in the group itself. So now you get to tell who you are. So <laughs> I, I don't comment as frequently in the, within the group. She and I do discuss right. everything. Sure. Yeah. In He's the, the group. silent. Did this partner. conversation come up? And oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. were oh, your yes. feelings on it? Well, I think the 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 beauty of the group particularly given its size and scope, is that you will get the full gamut. Sure. In terms of responses. Sure. So a question like yours, right, you will get the human response and reaction. And so there will be some people who will be extremely supportive and extremely level-headed, and then you will get some people who will be who typical will be social triggered. media people that will be triggered sure. by it and, yeah. and will have some issue and take some issue and will have no problem with expressing that as well. I think it's important to get all of those perspectives, but I think what you find is that overall, the general perspective of the group is that 
they want to see progress right. sure. towards more diversity, towards more inclusion. And as long as they see that effort being made by the brands, then they, yeah. they're, 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 sure. they're going to they're going to be supportive. And, of and they efforts. should they should at least be yes. supportive. Right. The the. You, we mentioned both ends of the spectrum, but there's also a massive amount of people who are just like, I just don't care for it anymore. Like, I grew out of that brand. Right. They, they had no feelings one or the other. And I, I love healthy discussion, and I feel when you have these really thought out discussions and you get the gamut of feelings, you are... That is progress. That's progress towards perspective. That's progress towards understanding the other all sides yeah. of, of feelings on a subject. Um, yeah. And and I I walked away feeling really thankful that you were in charge of that space because uh, it's something that uh, I, I think it's it's so I I have a little experience running a, a group on Facebook. It's hard. It yeah, is. that's what it's, I was just going to say. I mean, it's it's it's, so it's great to have all the different perspectives, but let me bring up the other side of it, which is managing a group of people <laughs> of that size. Of humans. Is, where are you going to be in another year? <laughs> right, right. That are drinking. Right. Um, is how challenging how challenging has it been to see the group grow so quickly and go from you know one thousand to three thousand five thousand eight thousand? It's definitely yeah. been challenging. I just want to go back to something that you kind of brought up. So Armand, it's, he's the CEO of Black Bourbon Society, so he's very much involved. He's my partner in in all aspects, in love life and in business, um, and so he gets the brunt of it because I've learned to just vent to him sure. before I vent on Facebook. That's what partner's for, yeah. You know what I mean? That yeah. cathartic and, release. Yes, and so so he gets it and he, you know, he's 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 very silent because he's busy, but he helps me to like like you like you always said, don't react, take the time to respond. And so that's what we try to do and I feel like that's a level of maturity that you have to have in managing a group. You have to not only respond, but you have to have maturity and really um, you have to clearly state and, and set the tone for your group. Um, and that's what I think we we have our fun. We laugh. And sure. You know, it's not such a serious group, but um, I do draw lines in the sand. Well, you have to, yeah. Yeah, and I do. You know, we filter out all of um, people. Try and post very ridiculous things in the group, and we have the ability to delete them, so they never even see the page. So we try and control something. You post like approval. You, you turned that yeah. on a while back. A oh, while back. Yeah. Well, that no, was we've always had it on from the beginning. Yeah, that's yeah. something I think that's pretty smart. unique about the group. <laughs> Uh, in that we do every post has to be approved and right. we got pushback on that at the beginning, in the beginning because we did. people were used to going in other groups and just being able to say whatever. Whatever. take a picture of their new bottle they got and their crotch on their crotch in, sure. the, in the parking lot of the <laughs> store and slap it up there yeah. and they want to see they want that you know immediate gratification you know they want to it post and they want to see it in the group they want to see the flex. likes yeah. and see all that and they do they slap it on there and then like three hours later it's not in the group and then <laughs> she's getting you know DMs get like well, why, why is my post not being in the group and well I don't want to see your pants right <laughs> or, or more so right. Right. Well, you're really tight <laughs> <tired. laughs> that's, that's a bannable offense in HBS we, we, we turned shot. off yeah. we turned off crotch shots and I was against it at first uh, but I we have uh, at the time we had uh, three admins mm -hmm. um, and and the other two are more like the silent, but we, but we have full conversations. Uh, we talk about things that we want to approach. And one day, this guy was just like, no more cross shots. I'm tired of seeing uh, your pants would be the way to say that. <laughs> and uh, so we banned him. And I was like, you know, I don't want to be overly censoring. But you do get that, that same feedback where people feel almost like an attack. Not that they that you censored them, but that you could censor them, right? Right. right. And uh, it's it's a weird thing, but when you do reach a certain size, especially I, I also admin a a comedy group that's an, a, a podcast called Your Mom's House. It's a silly podcast group, but there's twenty four thousand people in it. Wow. And we had you to turn to on do it. Start because drama. all of the jokes, all of the funny references from imagine your favorite uh, you know movie that had the you know Terminator. I'll be back. Imagine if you had a group. Every post would be, I'll be back. Like right. it gets, it gets, you right. get to a point where you had to look t tired of beating these inside jokes to death. It's just turn Let on post approval, yeah. and, uh, and yeah. it's, it sucks. But the overall, look, the group's not going anywhere. It's going to continue to grow. And what you see is the overall health maintains. You get a few people that get their feelings hurt, 
but it's a it was a right decision to make. And you know, and with that being said, it's like we have 8,000 members, and we did at one point have a few who were really. Um, who were really disappointed with the way things that were going on in our group, the way we the way we were running it, and the vision of BBS. They had a completely different vision, and they kept kind of, you know, they were kind of like the trolls. They wanted sure. to always do the memes. They wanted to always do all this stuff, and um, eventually, <laughs> you know, they um, they then tried to start their own group. Um, and What's when it we, called? Uh, oh, gonna that's going to that. happen. There's going to be some other. Yeah. We wouldn't give, we wouldn't we, give any of gonna, them the honor. Yeah, yeah we wouldn't even give them the honor of, of promoting their <laughs> brand. <laughs> but um, but they left and they did their own group while staying also in ours. And what we found out was that our real loyal members were saying, do you know this sure. person started a group and has invited me? And sure. then they look at the list and they say, everybody in our group is also in BBS. Right. That was the only time I've had to kick someone out of my group. Sure. And we kicked out five members. Because they're just, they're right. just a, uh, because a they, fox in the hen house. Yeah. They're, just, right. they're just there to, to, to ruin stuff. They're not right. there to... That's the only time you've had to That's kick people out? No, she doesn't do kick it. anybody out. I don't kick anybody out. Oh, wait, I got to tell Wade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't kick, you know, and everyone's like, oh, please don't kick me out. And I'm like, I don't do that. Like, you really sure. have to, I mean, Ugh, almost call me like a B word or sure. something or or the N word in order for me to do that. But sure. um, no one, but that to me was like, a complete breach. Oh, yeah. Like, you, you it's not only yeah. childish. And like, yeah, it was petty. It was super petty. And so I kicked them out. I let them go. And I just had to keep telling myself during that time because I'm a Libra. I'm super sensitive. I'm really nice. He'll tell you all of that. And But I had to say, like, and I kind of want everybody be to be line. my friend. Yeah. But I, I had to tell myself, okay, letting go of these five people still means at that time, I think we only had like 3,000 sure. members. And only. Like, she says only. <laughs> well, no, but it's like, okay, I let go of 5,000 people. Five people. I still have 2,995 members who really like what we do. And sometimes we can get caught up on like, oh, we pissed this one person off. But we it have to remind. Away a bit, yeah, it does. It's like, yeah. how come I couldn't get I that person well. to fall in line with everyone else? <laughs> well, yeah, he's. That's why he's my it's partner because he, yeah. he says the other side but of it a coin. Every time, you you right? need yeah. to. You're the rock, right? Like you need to. You need to. It, it helps. I get in my head about things, and I. Mm -hmm. It helps to have someone just there to bounce things off of, to have that talk with. Uh, my wife's really good with it, but my wife, you know. She's like, just burn it down. Just, you know, <laughs> like there comes a, there comes a point where you realize, yes, it is a for you that it is a business. Uh, yeah. Right. This is but my it's, life. Yeah. But it's uh, it's hard sometimes. Just yeah. Mentally. It yeah. is. Oftentimes, it's a challenge to merge your business with other people's passion, and so, um, you know, I always say to her, you know, if ever, I mean, this is your boat, and if they aren't rowing. In, in the, the same, same direction, direction they gotta get off that you're That's a good rowing way to say that. then you're rowing really hard and they're rowing a, the opposite direction they're dragging and, you and you're both yeah. <laughs> and so some people have to get thrown overboard uh, in order for the boat to keep moving in the direction that she set and she, it's her boat and she set the direction so yeah everyone else is you know if they believe in the mission yeah. Then, and we always go back to mission. I yeah. think that's what always saves us. Does this fall in line with the mission of Black Bourbon Society? Does this promote inclusion and diversity within the spirits industry? Like, yes, we do drink whiskey. We love it. But, you know, let's talk more about it. Let's get educated on it. We want to be educated consumers. We want the brands to educate us more on the whiskey. So as long as we can stay focused on that, then we're good you have a problem with that and you just want to harass our members sure. or be a rabble rouser for no reason then well I've told people I've said that about Todd he, he also helps run the group now that I, as I get older in life the one thing that I appreciate the most in other <clears throat> adults is just people who are low maintenance I, I don't I, I, Hello. I, I love podcasts and I love uncensored podcasts I like because this is how we talk as people. Right. Um, I, I don't like vulgarities. Like, you know, no. someone's just constantly vulgar. Not gratuitous. But, but uh, yeah, I think sexual vulgarities bother me, but, but language, mm -hmm. like, just typically, mm -hmm. you know, shit. 
fart, whatever. That didn't bother me. You um, know what? Um, we were talking about this morning over breakfast. I was saying I'm to the point now where, like, and even in like rap songs, it really bothers me really? to hear curse words. Like, I'm like, oh my god, turn it off. Like, I'm, like I can't focus. As soon as I hear something vulgar, it kind of knocks me off. Whatever. My, my son rhythm. will yell it out from the back seat, and he was like, "That's a bad word. You need to turn that back <laughs> to the channel." I'm like, "I'm sorry." Vulgar. Right. Yeah. Vulgar. And, and and so will ours. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's the thing. Like, I can't hear it, but <laughs> sure. I, I curse a lot sure. in front of my kids, and they always call me out on it. And sure. I says, yeah, I hate hearing curse words, but I do like cussing. Yeah. <laughs> se- se- sexual vulgarities, and when it replaces intelligence. Like, what's yeah. the there, there's some people who cuss so much that you right. can't even grasp. Their, they, instead of saying things like contingent, it would be like, you know, this, you know, like, when, whenever you feel multiple syllable like you could in in this place of this word you could use a word that's three syllables that conveys how smart and intelligent and adult you are but instead you've replaced it with fuck right yeah. so it's not quite let me just oh, there you go <laughs> um, it's it's when 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 it becomes so excessive that you can't even have a conversation with a person that, that bothers me uh, but I, I there are a lot of podcasts I like that are just uncensored and, and honest that's I was gonna ask you what are your what are your favorite podcast right now uh, there's there's quite a few. Uh, I'm I'm really a huge comedy fan. I love comedy, and I love the space of of comedy being anything goes. Oh yeah. Uh, if I, if you're paying to go see someone perform, whatever they say is whatever they say, and uh, as long as it's part of the act, right? It's different when you see these some guys get into a fight or you know someone says something horrible. Uh, but I uh, I like Rogan's podcast. Joe Rogan yeah. has a great podcast where he brings in a lot of uh, the diversity of guests is pretty great and I don't just mean race I mean like you can have a podcast with other comedians uh, MMA podcast which I'm not a huge fan of MMA but also he'll have on Neil deGrasse Tyson and they'll talk about right. black holes I'm like oh, okay that's, that's I love that. well, and he's no, he's gotten so big and so known from MMA that people don't realize that he's got that background super smart mm-hmm. his yeah. podcast do you know how, what kind of views he gets no so it's crazy because in 2015 I think he was hitting uh, 30 million a month Wow. Uh-huh. On all of his platforms. And in 2017, it was like 90 million a month. 90 million views a month. It's 2019. That's, that's insane. And his show has only gotten more popular. Uh, he's got to be doing 100 million views plus. Did a he month. start on the, was it the Man Show? Was that his first? No, was that, was News it? Radio. Okay. News Radio, which was Oh, yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, which yeah. It was awesome. News Radio okay. was great. Yeah. But a, TV. 100 million <laughs> views. <laughs> Phil Hartman. I don't, oh, I don't Hartman. listen to a lot of podcasts. Phil Hartman, yeah. Me neither. Yeah. I do one, but um, yeah. I don't even watch. I don't watch own? TV. I do. He doesn't. He, so I do. You listen to every episode. I do. Do you do it because you're afraid you may have said something wrong, or because you want to hear if it sounds good? I want to hear the sound quality. Sure. I actually enjoy hearing us talk. You know, sure. we're well. We were long distance, and so sometimes like it's just a way of me. Sure. Feeling like we're connected. Sure. Um, and but then also, I'm I'm critical of my speech and wanting to make sure that I don't say um mm. every other word. So I know about I, it. It's, it's I know so you're not hard. To yeah. do that. When you start I, paying I, attention, I, I still do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I kind of do it as like, what could I have done better? And he he won't listen to it, but I'll I'll tell him like your mic was a little low this time, or sure. I heard a little feedback. It sounded like we weren't necessarily in sync because again. We podcast um, via like Zencaster, like sure. to, like a sh- an online service, and so it records my track, and then it records our mom's track, and then we send it to the AVB network, and then they merge the tracks. Sometimes they take the time to That's merge cool. the tracks like perfectly. Sometimes there's overlap. It just depends. So sure. I always listen for quality. Too. Um, I knew about the ABV. Ne- Go ahead. I was like, I don't listen. Oh yeah. Um, I have probably listened to two episodes. Maybe. Because I'm, because you were with me. I, yeah, I, I, I can't stand the sound of my own <laughs> voice. Really? You, I, I, I mean this. You, I, I, I'm a happily married man with four kids. <laughs> <laughs> Your voice is fantastic. <laughs> Thank Your voice you. is good. Even now, like I, the first segment, I went to go check the levels while we were talking, and yours were a little low. Uh-huh. And and even when you're far away from the mic, you've got this booming radio voice that's you could be doing voiceover work which I know someone who does he works in the cigar industry it doesn't take much of your time and it's a nice little side check I think you could be I, I would I would consider I think you, I, 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 
I would consider I, I love nature documentaries. Sure. So yeah, I would yeah. uh, I would totally I would totally do the voice. And that for, would be especially funny if you don't like to listen to it, but that's what you do. I, that's but what I would does. never. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I'm like the actor that never watches his own film. You know, and I, I can't stand the sound of my voice. I always think I sound strange. You know, back in the day when we had answering machines, sure. and you'd call someone, you'd leave a voicemail on their machine, and then you'd go over to their house, and then they'd play the machine back and check their messages, and then you would hear yourself on the machine. Yeah. It, I would drive so me crazy. Really I'm with you. I don't yourself. like it. I, I hate hearing myself. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, we, we all um, hate it, but we do a podcast yeah. anyway. So. There's yeah. so much to unpack there, but no, this is not lot. that type of show. <laughs> there's a lot of ther- therapy that could be done on the show right sure. now. We'll keep drinking, but we'll get to the bottom we'll of get that. To it eventually. Yes. Um, so you guys are. Let's talk about the ABV network for a second. So I, I knew Steve Akeley. Now I don't know the whole hierarchy of how ABV network works, but about five years ago, the, the way this started for me was. Instagram. Mm -hmm. I have a cartoon character that I was doing for my Instagram account because people would take pictures of their bottles and okay, that's cool, but it was a bit excessive. Like everyone's just taking pictures of bottles. So I created a cartoon character named Whiskey Pete and I put him in my photos and it was a great thing. I got a lot of traction, you know, 5,000 followers on Instagram and and Steve found me and did a little write up on me, and then he, just to watch the way that his thing has exploded, mm-hmm. uh, which I, from what I understand, ABV Network's his, right? Uh-huh. Steve Akeley? Is yeah. His? He, the way he's exploded has been off the charts. I mean, there's all these shows. How did you guys get tied up with him? Um, Steve reached out to me um, when he was looking to do. Um, a, a year ago, so a year and a half ago, he reached out to me when he was looking to do um, some programming around Black History Month. And I guess he found out about Black Bourbon Society, reached out to me and asked if I wanted to be interviewed for one of his podcasts um, for the Bourbon Daily. And um, we instantly became friends. And of course, I did the podcast with him. Um, And then he needed some other contacts, like he wanted to get in contact with Vaughn, who had just started Uncle Nearest. And I I had Vaughn's contact information, was able to facilitate that. But uh, he continued to ask me to come back on the show, like as guest appearances and then he I I told him I said look like I write I do some columns every once in a while and I'd love the opportunity to write for Bourbon Zeppelin which is also owned by sure. him yeah yeah so I started Remember writing. When you a, launched it. Yeah, so I started writing a monthly column. I'm I'm, I'm called Samara's Take on uh, the Bourbon Zeppelin and then he fell in love with Armand. We and literally his voice? saw him yeah. We, I met him in Louisville. In Louisville, yeah. When we went for um, for one the of first, our excursions yeah, that the we do. Yeah, first uh, Brown Derby. Yeah. Weekend, and he's from St. Louis, and I'm from St. Louis, and well, he's not just from St. Louis; he lives in St. Louis. So sure, I, I'm sure. from St. Louis. I was born and raised in St. Louis, and so we hit it off, uh, starting with the St. Louis connection, and then. Just, you know, in terms of everything that he's trying to accomplish, he's done some really amazing things. First of all, he's an amazing person. Yeah. Um, first and foremost. And that's what enables him to be the head of the net of the, of the podcast network, the, you know, managing editor of Bourbon Zeppelin. He's got his hands in so many different things and he works really, really hard. And so when you work with him, when you associate with him, you know, it's easy to work hard at it. It's easy sure. to work hard to be good at it. Yeah. You know? And so we just, from there, then he came and said, well, what about, you know, you guys doing a podcast? Right. And we yeah, were all, yeah. we were on board with it. We wanted to, wanted to do How it. How long we have you had the podcast? It. Almost a year. We started September. And what's the frequency? Last year. It's every week, but okay. we're kind of like on summer Rough. vacation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, an unsanctioned summer vacation Steve right now. Is, uh, Steve is very, very flexible, very flexible with us. Sure. Yeah. We're very grateful to him. Um, but we try to do something. We try to do once a week. You know, like I said, sometimes we. Well, up, we, let's, I mean, let's we, like, tell the truth. Why, it's been hard because you're in grad school. Well, I mean, yeah, we have. I mean, we have yeah. other businesses. We have. Sure. I mean, I'm finishing up, up your second, a second masters. master's degree, and so uh, it, it's been a challenge sometimes to, you know, to get the episodes out sure. on time every week. It's a commitment. Yeah, it is yeah. a commitment, and yes. so 
Um, but so we'll do that. We'll get back kind of in that groove after this month when I finish. But um, we aim for once a week, but I would say probably it ends up being once every week and a half. Sure. <laughs> or so on average. Yeah. It, it was, uh, it, it's hard to commit to anything. It's easy to say a podcast sounds like a fun thing to do. It's hard when you realize that it's indefinite. Yeah. Forever, right? It's theoretically forever. And every yes. week you got to come up with a guest. And yes. every week, like th- today, I'm all, we're only here for one day, but we're knocking out three weeks in one day. We're banking them. Uh, four and, and two days. And I think we will start to do that four more days, often. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah. here's the big news. Here's Drum Roll. Because sure. you don't know this. Nobody knows this. Steve doesn't know this. But um, so, again, I was living in Los Angeles. Armand is in Atlanta. He's also in grad school. So we've got the five businesses between the two of us that we run. Sure. So um, our time is crazy. But Armand in school in two weeks, he'll have his second master's degree. And just last week, the reason why we didn't podcast last week is because we decided that I am moving to Atlanta permanently. Oh, wow. So oh. at least we won't have the time I think we zone. This one. Are you from California? I'm from Los Angeles. Okay. And that's a, that's a big move. Yeah, it's yeah. a big move. <laughs> to Atlanta. And to Atlanta. So I, I, I spend my summers in Atlanta as is. So, you know, but the, the intent was that I would be there this summer and then go back in August. Sure. We've got return flights and everything. But we know last week we were just like, this is this sucks. So and we don't want to do that. So did the conversation come up between either you going to LA or you going to Atlanta? We <laughs> talked about that very early on. Sure. Yeah. Um, but over time, it seemed uh, like the, the right way fit. things and they, even with the way things run with the the business and the group. Yeah. Uh, most of the business, most of the activations, we just named you know five cities and actors all. But I mean, East Coast, Houston yeah. is the furthest west, mm-hmm. right. right? And so, Louisville obviously is the hub of the whiskey, whiskey business, industry. and that's it's in the Eastern time zone. So, it, it just worked out where it's just more it's more efficient to run the businesses uh, out of Atlanta. My one of my businesses is not very portable. I mean, it has to be in Atlanta. Sure. And so, we but we thought about it. We, yeah, we were he owns a construction company. Okay. Doing. Yeah. You know, a, two master's like, degree, a construction company, a voice like God Himself, and, and a real estate investment. And, and a, fund. Uh, Jesus, <laughs> like, yeah. what am I? What am I doing with my life? <laughs> well, my wife doesn't watch this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we're all over the place, um, and needless to say, you know, it just made better sense. Sure, sure, mm-hmm. I totally get it. Uh, and you guys are doing big things. I mean, um, those uh, those barrels alone, that tour that you're doing, when has that's not is that going to be announced by them? When is that? When are you coming to Houston? Because I'm thinking if it's within the next couple of months, we could air this a little closer so that we're introducing for those who don't know about you guys in Houston, yeah. introducing you guys. Plus, uh, where is the barrel going to go to Houston? Is it going to be one particular? Do we know any of these things? So those are still in the works. Uh, we do know that we'll be there by the end of September. Okay. So we'll be in Houston. Your market for sure, and by September. Do you have you already? Are they? Is someone dealing with that at the top level at Beam, or do you already talk to them? Because I know the the people in Houston, Haley and them. I was wondering if you talked to them yet. So yeah, so they're probably one of the people who are on our calls that we have, but their team is looking into on and off premise locations for this, you know, barrel to be split up and will land. Sure. Um, And we will then come in and of course bring out our audience and recruit new audience members Mm -hmm. as well. Your audience, of course, is more than. Welcome to attend. We want to see everybody, um, and then they'll be ha- they'll have the opportunity to buy the bottle. So, well, I mean, our our audience is pretty diverse. I mean, Houston being a big hodgepodge of of everybody, but mm-hmm. the uh, we we've got several HPS members that recently joined uh, the Black Bourbon Society. Once, I mean, you, you, your story has kind of garnered probably international attention, but for sure nationwide attention and uh, every once in a while we'll get someone like going back to censoring things in the group we don't have on post approval for the bourbon group but what we do do is we'll delete stuff if it's a repost yeah uh-huh. and every every once in a while that fond story of like the original yeah. story that broke gets posted like 
it'll and you'll notice over like a five day period it'll get posted like five Rebus, times and yeah. you're like yeah. okay I'm deleting this I'm Delete. deleting this but but then you know we'll have those conversations uh, and we've a couple Isaac Menso is a, a great guy in the group and he's been he's been in HBS since almost the very beginning he's a little bit more quieter now than he used to be but uh, he's a person of color his wife is white so they've got a mixed marriage and that's a whole new a whole nother layer of trying to uh, make things work and especially in some of these groups and uh, and he uh, we recently we try to avoid all controversial debates in the group mm-hmm. anything anything politically related bye like, yeah, yeah no, no, no politics no politics yeah, no, we're good. Yeah. no politics uh, but he had posed something that uh, had to do with diversity and spirits and it, it was a really good like hard work I just I love a good discussion that's really involved and then no one's mad at the end. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like right. it's all handled well. Even if we've had a few drinks, it's all handled well, and we walk away feeling like that conversation needed to happen, or uh, or just was a was a chance to just hear more perspective outside my comfort zone. Yeah. So, um, it I I couldn't be happier with you guys. Yay. I don't know about the other group either, so I don't even know who they are. So. <laughs> <laughs> they're not worth it. But in, in their mission is purely, they're very focused on hunting. You know, that they liked the whiskey hunt. Mm-hmm. They like finding, you know, every oh, single groups. barrel pick. You know, so, and, and that's okay. If that's your jam, that's your jam. Sure. But again, it doesn't, it didn't necessarily blend with what the mission was. Because for me, you know, our hashtag is, it's bigger than bourbon. <laughs> Bourbon is our, you know, it's our entry point. And I feel like, and that's one of the things when I first started doing events in um, California, um, I wanted to create this audience. I wanted the brands to see that African Americans were really interested in drinking whiskey. But the other layer to that was once you got all these amazing African Americans in a room and you really look back and you could kind of you knew like okay he owns that business and that person works for google and oh that she's a writer for the san francisco chronicle like you start to kind of look to see all the talent in the room Mm -hmm. um and this this is an equalizer for me oh sure you know whiskey it takes that first layer of ego right off your shoulders hubris right out the window and you don't care like who cares if you work for google what are you drinking? Who mm-hmm. cares if you own a construction company? What's your what cocktail is that? Oh yeah, he's way you more know? Uh, rich than I am, and, he's, <laughs> and so and but that's what we notice. A we notice a net worth, the collective net worth and worth in our room. But then also we saw started to see the collaboration, the family that we were building, and that's what is bigger than bourbon. Sure. And so again, the brands see that the brands are automatically impressed because our membership is super curious. They're eager to learn. They ask amazing questions. Your Sunday school stuff's been great, too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that you was. Know, that was great. We, we had to do that because we've got 8,000 members sure. that we tripled in size in the past six what, weeks. What, can you explain that? I haven't... Oh, Sunday school? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's basically, we've had to start from the beginning and teaching our audience about whiskey. Okay. So they're like little posts that we post every Sunday. Little graphic. Yeah, little okay. graphics. Like, what is bourbon? 51, yeah. at least 51% oh, cool. corn. You know, yeah. the age statement. Yeah, we did a user like guide that. to kind of give out, but it's it's kind of, it's not active. It's there. So yeah. You right. choose to go there or not. Yeah, we do. Yeah. With like lots of basic information. We do a welcome. Facebook yeah. will only let you tag 50 people. Yeah. So mm-hmm. around 45 new members, uh, we welcome the new yeah. members. Yeah. And we give them a link to the user guide that's got all the helpful info, mm-hmm. every bit of information you need to know about yeah. bourbon from regulations. All the abbreviations. All yeah. the abbreviations. Acronyms. Uh, and he spent uh, quite a while, and it's like 12 pages long. It's a huge, nice. huge guide. Uh, but it's got like qu- a quick guide reference, like go to page 12 if you want to know what this is. Yeah. And uh, and but there's no way to know how, how if it's how been used or not. It right. Is. It so, started out as a quick guide, and then I'm like, Chris, this is 14 pages. <laughs> well, you know, Chris and I, but, but we kind of so talked <laughs> about that. It's like, how much information is too much information? Yeah, you it's know? there if they want to get it, you know? Yeah. And, and the, daily, the education happens all the time. I think it's great that you have a set time and then people know or, sure. you know, day. That, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. We Sunday know that. Schools, which, yeah, it's yeah, awesome. We have Dave, and David is doing. Oh, he does a trivia, which he leaves well, super Well, he's doing fun. the dictionary, right? Or the. Oh, yeah, he did that. Like the ABC. So he's suburban. doing that and adding entries. And yeah. Doing, that's so, fun. All of it isn't m- fun, though. Like, you know, we know that 
people, society, our attention span is only three seconds mm-hmm. long. Mm-hmm. Like it's like, oh, right. next scroll, scroll, scroll. Yeah. You know, like we don't have their attention to read manuals. So we make it, we break it down into just like super Especially bite sized pieces. I, I find in social media, people are used to consuming quickly. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's this. Yeah. It's and, constant and stimulation. I swear, anytime I write more than one paragraph, people are like, too long. Too long in reading. Yeah. 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 Like, the okay. only exception <laughs> is if there's fire. Because they will watch a distillery burn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And they will, will oh, they will, the shit and will repost it. Yeah. <laughs> and will repost it. Oh, at the, my God. And yes. they will watch it for like, it's the, just, and they watch Notre Dame. They sure. watch, they just, they will watch a fire and just sit and watch it for hours. Yeah. Anything else? Three seconds. Yeah. yeah. Any, yeah. Any, Except disaster. Exa- that's, yeah. that's so terrible. Drama. That's true. It's right. Drama. Yeah. On, on yeah. the road, but something's on the going wrong. People yeah. slow down. Yeah. Exactly. Rubber necking on the highway. It's uh, it's it's crazy because people are so quick to condemn things and to just, uh, you know, pull up a chair. Sometimes you'll see these posts, and somebody will post it, and you being experienced, you know where this post is going. Like you mm-hmm. know how people are going to react yeah. to it, and all you see is a bunch of popcorn <laughs> gifts of people just being yeah, like, like all right, I'm, gonna watch, I'm, gonna watch, I'm gonna watch this burn down. Right. Um, yep. But yeah, you, you do. You get to a certain size, you see an overwhelming influx of new drinkers. And you you do kind of find not the obligation, but you do take the motivation to, you know, give them some one on one without having to do a another you know eighty dollar dinner at a restaurant for one on one stuff, right? Right. right. Um, and it's it's been great. There's been lots of discussion and um, who who makes those for you? I do. You I make do them yourself. Everything. And I, I design. Do I mean, from our logo to website to. Every single piece of content and graphic. When's the when's the Black Bourbon Society f- official bottling happen? <laughs> when's that label coming out? That we cannot <laughs> talk about. So it is happening. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> you admitted it's happening, but you said you can't talk about it. I think uh, I think we'll talk you, next year. As as close as you are with uh, Uncle Nearest, I think a little sub label or or your own completely separate, whatever works for you. But uh, I'll have to make you sign an NDA before uh, we can have hey, that listen, conversation. I'll 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 agree via Facebook. Let's, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I want, either way, I look forward to uh, what what comes next because I, it is not slowing down. It's uh, yeah. it's not at the peak. I think you guys are just seeing your first plateau, and I'm really excited for both of you. Thank you. And, and you know, well, we are so forward facing on Facebook with our membership. But really, the work that I want to spend my time doing, and the work that Armand does silently, the stuff that doesn't make it on on the gram, sure. is that we are working one on one with the industry, and so we have consultation meetings. We're talking with the brands, and and the brands really do want to get diversity and inclusion right, not only from the marketing standpoint, but internally with their own staff, they want to be able to get that right. So that's where we really do spend a lot of time when I'm not on Facebook sure. we're working and we're and we're having those conversations and we're advising and and figuring out and, and having you know and having these deeper conversations within the brand so hopefully that's that's the 2.0 of Black Bourbon Society is more consulting within the brands and really making the and impact they have to be so interested see. right I would imagine I mean there's Super. such a huge audience out there that is not as familiar that you're you're trying to be you know to show bourbon and and you know it's there's just so much potential out there right or the brands yeah yeah you know? I think that um, well first of all a special we have always have to give a special kind of shout out and recognition to Beam uh, because Beam was on board with us from this, the very beginning from the concept from the beginning and they didn't require a show proof right really they I mean perfect idea perfect opportunity let's yeah. do it said, yeah. we see it we're on board what do you need from us sure yeah and that's why we chose to go and do the first barrel with pick, first barrel pick with, with makers. makers. And that's why we are doing these activations with them because they, you know, so all of them have been open and have been wanting to work with us and, 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 and are open. And I'll get to, I'll address that in a second, but I definitely do want to acknowledge the fact that being from the beginning very was beginning. very mm-hmm. much so saying, we're on board with this. This is this is something that's needed, that's good, and 
how tell us how we can support you, not well, this is how you can support sure. us. Right. And right. so because of that the relationship has really grown and to where certainly they do see the benefits of our Working work and our and yeah. our and our efforts. But yeah. to to address the industry as a whole, it was something that was actually very pleasantly surprising and that you're absolutely right that they all see this as something that is necessary and they are all on board uh on board with pushing diversity and inclusion mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people may have assumed that because these are businesses that started in rural uh, many of them in rural kentucky that you would have resistance to it yeah. and it's com it's the it's the complete it's the opposite, opposite. Right. the master distillers are driving this yeah uh and they drive it to corporate Mm -hmm. And then corporate gets behind it. Yeah. And well, these are the people who are passionate about this. Is what they right. do. That's they, right. They, they want people to drink yeah. their stuff. Right. right. And but Outside then again, the going back aspect. to that spectrum of like, are you a helper? Are you an advocate? Are you an organizer? And these are these are our advocates within the brand. So you know, Armand and I have made personal relationships. These these are our friends. Like these are our buddies. We call them and just just to call them and see how mm -hmm. they're doing. But they're also major advocates within their companies. Mm -hmm. And so they do, they send it back to corporate and they say, no, like, find the find the budget, work it out. But we have to continue to work with BBS. We believe in what they're doing and we want to support them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, and the proof's in the pudding, right? The last year alone has been astronomical. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Pass that bean product down. Yeah, speaking of bean product, um, bean? we're running yeah. out of time. Oh, it's a Knob Creek. Yeah, it's a Knob Creek. We're huge fans of theirs as well. Um, oh, yeah, well, you like Knob. I do this, like Knob. Is this 120? Well, I like the 120 especially, but yeah. You don't, this is a good one. I mean, you don't have to mention any specific brands if you don't want to, but are there any um, brands or drinks that you guys avoid? Uh, you mentioned inclu inclusivity and, and diversity and trying to educate the general public of stuff outside their comfort zone. Uh, we have a real bad problem in Texas with uh, with vodka, <laughs> where right. we, where the the new drinker for us is constantly trying. We're trying to get them to understand that drinking is uh, tasting bourbon is not meant to get drunk. It's not. It's not a. Right. It's right. not a purpose to an end. Right. Um, it, it's it, you know. There's very few vodkas out there that I think actually have a taste to them. Um, well, they're, not, they're not supposed to. to. Well, it's not they're supposed, not supposed to. to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but those that do, uh, they're like, I, there have been some that I've enjoyed that have, uh, but by enjoy, I mean enjoyed for vodka. But overall, I'm very anti-vodka. Anti mm -hmm. Barrel-aged spirits is where it's at. Between cognac, armagnac, uh, bourbon, rum, rum yeah. just that experience uh, of, of wood extraction and flavor is just... You know, it's what this is about, right? Mm -hmm. It's what the foundation of your business is built on is like getting people to this even playing field and trying something outside. You know, uh, I, I hate to say Jack, I'm not trying to beat on them, but you know, your your Crown Royal, right? Or your your purple bagged, stereotyped, <laughs> uh, you know, cheap drinkers that right. we. I remember uh, growing up. I remember. <clears throat> growing up thinking that Crown was the expensive drink. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. as an adult, I remember reading reports of it being one of the most stolen drinks because that's the perception that this is the most, like this, if you're not a drinker, you think Crown's like, it's up there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got not, a bag, so it must be good. I love, and I love Diageo. <laughs> it's and I, velvet. Yeah. <laughs> I love Diageo and I, I love a lot of their brands. I'm a huge Scotch drinker. Lagavulin's fantastic. Uh, but Crown, you know, kind of catches it on the chin a little bit from the, the experienced drinkers. I'm going to dance around this as politely as I possibly sure. can. Sure. Um, no, but she's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because, you know, if you want to find out how it really yeah. feel, you have to join Black Bourbon Society. And we there's some safety in it being said there, although there sure. can be screenshots. But um, I, for, for the listening and viewing audience, I will say... Um, there's no brand that we tell our members not to drink. We always leave the option on the table. Like, our members can drink whatever they wish. Like, if you like it, that's fine. I don't have to. However, um, in educating our membership about premium products 
and also about the awareness of diversity and inclusion and really about the genuine engagement between the brands and our audience. I often do refer to um, certain examples within the spirits industry that I feel have gotten it wrong with marketing towards African-American consumers. And um, I don't buy anything, including vodkas. If a rapper is talking about it, I don't want it. Sure. The like, celebrity endorsed Yeah, the product. celebrity endorsed. a lot of people in a box. Yeah, it paints people in a box. It pigeonholes African Americans into some homogenous community that we're absolutely not. Uh, but then I think it's very lazy marketing coming from the brands. It's easy to say, oh, we'll pay a rapper $150,000 to put this in a song and scratch, we're done with the African American community. Sure. Then they take that budget and they invest in five course wine and whiskey and dinner pairings in Houston for your audience or for other audiences and other demographics across the country. They take the time to actually really work with those demographics sure. and boost those numbers. Um, but with us, it does seem like, you know, with certain brands, it's just easy to say, oh, we'll have such and such rap about it. Sure. Or we'll have this person get on Ciroc. stage with it. Yeah, I don't, you know what I, I mean? don't know who handles Ciroc, but I know that yeah. that's a typical... Yeah, and there's know. ownership with Ciroc, so there's kind of a... Uh, that's a six in one, you know, six sure. in the hand and half a dozen in the other. But there's, um, so there is, I get that because Puff at least knows how to, what is he called? Is he called Diddy now? <laughs> He's so brother love. Who, what, is whomever. It, is, it really? is it brother love now? It's brother love now. So it, whomever, he yeah. was Puff when I was, I was listening I, to hip hop. Um, <laughs> but you know, but he at least negotiated some sort of brand sure. endorsement. He has some ownership in Ciroc, so I'm not going to knock his hustle. Sure, it's a yeah, his right. hustle, yeah. But um, but. Brands do get caught up in endorsements, and like I remember, um, Cavassier did something with ASAP Rocky, and they did all of their African American engagement was with ASAP Rocky. I don't even know what song he sings. I thought that was more of a thing of the past. I thought it's no. I thought that was because vodka, the the whole celebrity endorsed painting minorities into a corner thing seemed to be very prevalent in the '90s and the 2000s, yeah, even in the late '80s, you know, but. But I thought we were moving away from that as a culture for the most part. I know the last thing I remember was Virginia Black, and I. That it, crap it depends was where you're looking. That it depends kind of where you're looking at your fell apart. Bags. Right. Right. But that, that I think yeah. that was a good example. That was not. I don't think that was successful. I think Virginia Black did not have the same effect, obviously, as some stuff from you know Hennessy or you know some yeah. other stuff. Um, but yeah, but I mean, but uh, that's a part of the reason why I created BBS because. You know, when I said, like, how come, going back to that original conversation three years ago when I started the group, I was working with a brand, and I said, how come you're not doing this for my audience? And they said, well, you know, we didn't think that, A, we didn't think you wanted to drink yourself, or B, we we do that through these methods. And, you know, nope. and, and, mm. and, like, literally, that story, um, I was working with a brand in the Bay Area, and... Um, she was uh it was where i was working with a brand rep she was new to the area oh, Lord. and uh she tell me she did, stuck her foot in her mouth she <laughs> did more than that but um she was new to the area she um did not know san francisco in sure. the area like i did i'm an event i was an event planner before i did this um and so i said hey like i can plan your events while you're getting new to the city i know the restaurants i know the bars i know the owners like i can help you so i basically like she subcontracted her work out to me to kind of help her get her activations and stuff going in the Bay Area while she was getting familiar in San Francisco. Let me interrupt you real quick. Activations are events. Yes. Uh, I sorry. try. I try. No, no, it's not your fault. <laughs> I try to. I try to. Rem, I try to remind myself to make sure the audience is aware of some of the terminology difference. Sorry. But all of her okay. events, she was outsourcing. Yeah, to you. she was out events. She was outsourcing to me as she was getting acclimated to the, and moving her stuff from across the country. She was in Jersey, where okay. you're from. Gross. And um, yeah. <laughs> That's another story. Um, so anyways, um, I said, hey, like, as an event planner, like, I really want to make sure I'm meeting your benchmarks. Like, how are you, how do you get um, critiqued? Or how do you, like, what do you have to gauge do? Success. Like, how do you gauge success? How does your company do that? And she said, well, it just depends on who's there. So I said, okay, well, I want to make sure I meet your audience. It, it, our, it still blows our mind's mind, like, mind that the whiskey industry is solely based off of just who shows up oh. not about sales not about anything 
Um, I know that frustration. <laughs> Um, so anyways, um, so she handed, she's like, I don't have time for this. I'm waiting for the cable man. My furniture is like, whatever. And she handed me proprietary information from her brand that showcased how they target each demographic based off of age and ethnicity. Your heart start racing? You're furious? What I saw for African Americans, African Americans were only targeted in an urban demographic. And it was literally an image of an African American male with locks down to his behind his pants were sagging and baggy and kind of hanging there was an there was like an image an a image, stereotyped image and then it showed that's like, horrible it, it, but it showed what the age demographic was what target products they wanted that consumer to drink sure all of that was they had already stereotyped and labeled what that African what the African American consumer was no I, I, I'm no. like how would that you react to that I yeah. got upset yeah, yeah. and I was just and that's when I said like why do you think this? First of all, I was 36 at the time, married with two kids, like, and I have a master's degree in my own business, and I also worked in, and I also worked in nonprofit. And I said, why do you think like anything that like how do you think that I fit into this demographic? Sure. And um, I said, no, me and my friends, we live in San Francisco. We go to Napa every other weekend. We're wine collectors. We want scotch. We drink premium products. But they were so far off, the, their research was so far off base. And that's when she said, well, if you want this to change, you've got to create the group to show them that you exist. So was, was she saying, just so I can kind of understand, you weren't mad at her, you were mad at her company, and she was basically saying you should you should do something yeah, about it. Yeah, and, and she originally and then she be originally became one of our sponsors for our first events and she she said like you have to show the data. You have to prove to the yeah. companies that Change this the game. is worthy. Yes. And have, that's what I did. Have you uh, ever outed that company? No. No? She has never outed them. Can I, can I ask what spirit it was? It was bourbon. It was with, oh, that's mm -hmm. bourbon. It's tough. It's tough. Tell me off air. But that, but that brand, um, you know, and, and that brand, we've worked with that brand several times, and the brand is aware that they could have done better, that they could do better, and they are eager to do better. Sure. But I think that's the whole thing of Black Bourbon Society. It's I'm never going to be the person that just points fingers and says you must change this. Sure. But. I really hope that through the advocacy that we do, the speaking engagements that we have, the writings that I've done, the audience that we've proven, and now we do have the data behind the, like the work speaks for itself. Sure. And the industry is, like Armand said, they want to get it right. We've never heard the word no. Do you, have you put pressure on brands in their advertising to be diverse? That, you know, so that you're seeing diverse set of people drinking the product, not just a white man Drink, right. drinking whiskey, you know, in a suit. That we had that complaint <laughs> you know? one time. Uh, you know, it's it's hard in a position like myself. It, it's hard to not try to play devil's advocate and be like, no. Before we jump to this conclusion, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. right. We had it. We had an episode uh, where, where I literally I had filmed an episode with uh, the head of Bacardi for Houston, who's black and gay, and we did an episode with a uh, couple of bartenders. Uh, and uh, one of the, the one of the bartenders was also gay and a mix between uh, Southeast Asian and, and Hispanic. Super diverse episode, but I had them on because we're friends. I didn't even right. think about it. Right. And uh, we got a complaint the day that episode aired, almost as if she hadn't seen the episode that day, but she saw past episodes about needing more diversity. And I, 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 it ate away at me because I, I feel like I'm very inclusive and that I love everybody. Right. But but you know what I mean like it just it it, it kind of and I would imagine as a brand you you've got to if you're not aware you have to be aware. And if you're not aware you you've it's got their to responsibility. Fix it. They're wielding power. It's marketing. It's right. you're influencing people. Well, some of these brands outsource their marketing. Most of them do. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of big brands do. A lot the of big, big brands outsource them. Some of them even send them overseas. So you've got marketing companies coming from like talk about out of touch, like Sweden and mm -hmm. Dutchland, and they're trying to figure out how to market to African American consumers. 
That's they don't weird. even know what I that's look worse. like. That's right. worse. You know just, what I mean? That's worse than just hiring a white person here to do that. Right. right. To hire someone from Europe on what um, whatever what they're they think black people in, in LA and Atlanta sure. actually right. resonate what resonates with us as a consumer. So that's where it comes in. It's like, okay, we can consult with you, let us work with you, let us tell you, or let us just Honestly, as our mom would say, like, let's let us do it for mm-hmm. you, you sure. know, because um, we we have our finger on the pulse. We know our audience off the back of our, up, off the back of our hands. Have brands ever run ads by you guys yet? Just say, what does this look? How does this come across? Not yet. Not yet. That's a, we that's have a good had hit, um, right? we've had brands to come to us and say, like, we're really feeling like we need to address the diversity issue. Okay. This is, I mean, our not to talk about politics, but just to mention that our political landscape has all of us kind of walking on Oof. eggshells yeah. on yeah. how to deal with race sure, and how to deal. So everyone is scared to almost say anything because they don't want to get it wrong and they don't want to be associated with certain political parties or certain pol- politicians like they don't. So everyone is walking on eggshells. Um, and we're super sensitive and, and triggered, you know? And so um, one of the brands, just out of nowhere, I think it was in response to the article we had in New York Times, he said, I feel like we should come up with something and we should say something that, you know, we don't really care who you are, we just want you to drink our product. Sure. And I had to say, hold up, you should care who I am. Sure. And you should, you know, like, b- but first of all, it was, yeah, it was like, well, first of all, there's really nothing, no one's calling you out. No one's saying your brand is racist. Like, sure. that's not like, so don't be a hit dog if, you know, there's no need. Never heard that before. You know, a like, hit dog. Hit like a hit dog caller. And so he was, he felt this need to, to respond to the climate overall. But there's no, there's no real need to get ahead. Just show it in your work. Just to show me, it in to what me you it do. sounded more like they're just looking to increase revenue. Not so much yeah. that they're a hit dog, but that they're like, Hey, we just we could just really use you like please yeah. Drink well, more they of our can, stuff. so they can piggyback off of it. But then, if you if that's the case, then the psychology is still true. Don't say you don't care who I am as a consumer just sure. buy my product. That's even more reason why you should care. If sure. you want me yeah, to yeah. buy your product, you need to care that I am diverse. You need to care that I am black or that I'm, you know, well, that bl- people black. are Jewish or people are Latina or whatever. Sure. Like you actually do care that you know you have. LGBTQI um, consumers, you do care, and that's what makes your product so amazing. You know, you value your consumers just as much as we love your product. Absolutely, and it sounds like uh, Beam is doing a fantastic job at that. Yeah, well, they could work. Not everybody, no one's perfect. Sure. <laughs> and that, and that example that I just shared with you, that wasn't Beam. Sure. Um, but um, one of the things that I and I've been very vocal about this, but I do think Beam almost got it got it wrong when they did a commercial with Mila and Ooh, why do you feel that way because Mila does not I, I'm not drinking bean because Mila drinks bean you're drinking bean because Mila drinks bean oh I see because she's a woman and they're and only appealing to men she's a sex symbol so she wasn't appealing to me as a female sure. consumer she's appealing to you because she's you, sexy and she's beautiful do you know and I know that I'm probably not the majority but from my perspective what I liked about that was that there have been several they do these press junkets at movies where all these different news sources set up like one room and then they mm-hmm. just cycle through ten interviews in a day uh-huh. she's done several interviews and has been known to be a huge whiskey drinker. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I was like, hell yeah. Like, not they didn't just hire a pretty face. To me, they hired someone who actually cared. It would be like, yeah. no offense, I know y- y'all are partners. If they hired you, I would be like, a woman, not just a pretty face, mm-hmm. but you know your whiskey, you drink your whiskey. I, I find credibility in that. I, right. I, I like knowing, I, I like that better than Matthew McConaughey. I agree. I, I'm, a, I'm a huge Matthew McConaughey fan, but he's he's not a whiskey drinker. He's not, and I've talked to his people about coming on the show. Uh, I would love to have him on. Uh, the, the tagline of the show is spirited conversations with interesting people. I just want to have conversations with people I think are fascinating. I had a conversation with Dolph Lundgren from the you know Rocky movies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's something about that, and there's a few people coming up 
that are pretty big names, but they're, they're I call them old dogs. They've been in this. They've been in the celebrity right. for decades. They've done a lot, and I feel like there's there's a story there that's just worth talking to over drinks. You know? Right. Yeah. Uh, I like that, and I would love to talk to Matthew McConaughey in that way. But when that whole thing came up, I gave more credence to Mia because. I know that she actually is a whiskey drinker. Right. Uh, but I. But, but it's on the other side of that, trade, correct. Right? But on the other side of that, the average person is not going to know that she's a whiskey drinker. Right. And, and it's how just a she's sex presented. Symbol. So yeah. she's yeah, and she was presented as a sex symbol. Sure. So that resonates with you guys. That doesn't resonate with me as no, a that's valid. as an independent yeah, thinker, a point, as a yeah. woman. She, she's she's yeah. Vanna White walking through with the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not looking at the bottle. <laughs> yeah, but you're looking at like, damn, well, she looks yeah. good. You know, so. Well, this has been fantastic. We actually ran a little long, but I'm I'm glad we did so I can make Jack's job harder. Uh, <laughs> this has been uh, really nice. Thank we could you so talk much all for day long. We absolutely could talk all day long. We I have no idea what we're doing later. We're gonna try to find some some part of the city to enjoy. You know, there's a yeah, lot happening this week. But uh, thank you guys so very much uh, for coming on the show. Thank I you for having, for having us. Very nice meeting Yay. you tomorrow. I don't do handshakes. I do hugs, okay. but I'll, we'll I'll get it. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay. <laughs>